If you ever get the chance to travel, don't visit the twin provinces of Applesauce Lorraine, which lies somewhere between France and Baja, California. Not that the scenery isn't breathtaking, it is. In fact, too breathtaking. For the borders of Applesauce Lorraine are ringed with row upon row of Limburger lilies. Actually, this is a blessing in disguise. For in days of yore, warlike nations intent upon invasion were repeatedly repelled by this natural barrier. <laughs> As time went by, nobody had enough fortitude or enough sinus trouble to get by the Limburger lilies. Progress came to a halt, and that is why today, Applesauce Lorraine exists as it did back in the 16th century. But one thing changed. Yesterday, good king once allowed sat on the throne. He did until his half-brother, Francois Villain, paid a visit. Happy birthday, half-brother. I have a gift for you. It is not my birthday. I give it to you anyway. And he did. <laughs> Applesauce Lorraine had a new ruler, a greedy ruler who emptied the treasury and proceeded to live in a manner to which he was unaccustomed. There were the rat races in the sewers of Paris. Six thousand francs on Jean Valjean. The slave markets at Tangiers. Give me a dozen to go. By the time he returned to Applesauce Lorraine, he was flat broke. He resorted to the most evil way of raising money known to man, taxation. But, Your Highness, we already have income tax and sales tax. Then we'll have thumb tax and carpet tax. Under the yoke of heavy taxation, the people fell to their knees. But one man held out hope. Citizen Philippe Mignon, medium rare. You know what they did in France when they had this problem? They called the three musketeers. Alas, the only musketeer who answered the plea was Athos, who was getting on. In years. You want my advice? Pay the taxes. But he is a tyrant. Pay the taxes. He thinks Claire de Lune is a girl. That is different. We fight. Hey! But he couldn't fight without the rest of the musketeers. Porthos and Aramis. And as everyone knows, when musketeers retire, they go to live in Colorado. A ticket to Colorado, monsieur. Sorry, I only have one ticket left. Where to? Frostbite Falls, Minnesota. It was close enough, so Athos was on his way. But let us get there before him for Frostbite Falls, as if you didn't know, is the home of Rocket J. Squirrel and Bullwinkle the Moose. Almost lunchtime, Bullwinkle. How about a barbecue in the backyard? Good idea. I'm in the mood to shish a few kebabs. And when it came to shish kebabs, Bullwinkle was a master. With one hand, he blithely tossed onions, tomatoes, and kebabs of meat into the air. Then with the skewer, he parried and thrust like an expert swordsman, deftly impaling each piece in its proper place. All this did not go unnoticed, for at that very moment, Athos arrived in Frostbite Falls. Sacre bleu, there is only one person who can handle a sword like that. The old musketeer's eyes weren't what they used to be. Aramis, Aramis, long time no see. What did you call him, mister? Aramis, you are Aramis, aren't you? Yes, I am Aramis. You must have mistaken us for someone else. Porthos, you have not changed a bit, a trifle smaller, perhaps. Before our friends could gather their wits. And the kebabs, which I dropped. Athos explained his mission. But we're not. I will not take no for an answer. Well, it looks as if we're off on another hair-raising adventure. We'll find out in our next episode entitled Foiled Again or Don't Fence Me In. There is no joy in Applesauce Lorraine, for in our preceding chapter, the wicked Francois Villain lowered the people's morale by raising their taxes. We cannot go on like this. Something must be done. Something was done. They sent for the three musketeers. You are the three musketeers? I am one third. My name is Athos. Athos agreed to help, but not without his comrades, Porthos and Aramis, who years before had retired to a rest home in Colorado. However, through a slight mix-up, Athos found himself in Frostbite Falls, Minnesota, just in time to witness an amazing display of shish kebabbing by one bullwinkle moose. I know you anywhere. You are Aramis, and this is Porthos. He not only mistook our boys for his comrades, he insisted that they join him in the fight against tyranny. Lawrence Tierney? Unable to resist the challenge, they soon found themselves facing the border of applesauce Lorraine. Hokey smoke, something smells awful. Those are Limburger lilies, the natural flower of applesauce Lorraine. They don't smell very natural to me. They are an impregnable barrier. The odor keeps people from going out or getting in. Well, how did you get out? I had a pass. Unfortunately, the pass was only good for getting out, not getting in. That's when Rocky pulled out his copy of the Who's Who of Flowerdom, the Weeder's Digest. According to this, Limburger Lily stopped blooming every 24 hours for exactly 10 seconds. It didn't give them much time to cross the border, but they had no choice. Waiting for the exact moment, they took a deep breath... 
then made a mad dash. Just when the ten seconds were up, Athos emerged, Rocky emerged, and Bullwinkle stopped to pick up four-leaf clover. Luck is with me. So was the wind. Bullwinkle was nosed out. Fortunately, Rocky was able to pull him out. One hour later, the three musketeers stood outside the castle belonging to the evil Francois Villain. What are we doing here, Porthos? Francois Villain is the only one who can tell us where the king is hidden. Yeah, but suppose Francois isn't Villain to tell us. That's pretty bad, Bullwinkle. It's those Limburger lilies. I'm not irresponsible for anything I see. Meanwhile, upstairs, Francois Villain was entertaining his number one spy of all people, citizen Philippe Mignon. So, Mignon, you say that the three musketeers are coming here to spy on me, eh? We oui, and they are do any. That must be them now. Very well. Then we shall give them the big surprise. And a surprise it was, for when the castle drawbridge was lowered, out rushed a squad of Francois Villain's most deadly swordsmen. <laughs> Great Suzette, we are set upon. En garde, mon ami. So saying, Athos whipped out his trusty sword, or in this case, we should say, rusty sword. As for Rocky, in his haste, the sword flew out of his hands and buried itself into a nearby tree. It looked like our boys were hopelessly outnumbered and outfought until Rocky, recalling Bullwinkle's skill with a skewer, shouted... Shish kebab! That was all it took. The mighty moose pretended his opponents were shish kebab ingredients and quickly impaled them in their proper places. Ooh, ah, uh, ooh! Toupee! Curses! Your men have failed! Yes, that tall musketeer in the fur coat and crazy hat is a demon with the sword. But I will get them yet. It was not an idle boast, for Rocky and Bullwinkle and Athos crossed the drawbridge and entered what they thought was the castle's main hall. Actually, it was a bare steel room whose door clanged shut behind them. I got a hunch, friends, but villain is closing in on us. It wasn't villain, it was the walls of the steel room. Inch by inch, they moved in toward our friends. Be with us next time for Squeeze Play, or glad we could get together in an effort to restore the king of applesauce lorraine to his rightful throne bullwinkle came to a sudden decision let's go home we can't do that we gotta save the country along with athos who believed them to be his old musketeer comrades aramis and porthos that's uh, aramis they arrived at a castle belonging to the evil francois villain he's the only one who can tell us where the king is alas villain not only knew where the king was but what our heroes were up to thanks to the traitorous actions of one philippe mignon watch mignon i know how to deal with the likes of them moments later the three musketeers were set upon by a murderous squad of Francois Villain's best swordsmen. All would have been lost had it not been for Bullwinkle's unorthodox but most effective ability at skewering shish kebab. In the end, our heroes emerged victorious. Secret Blue Aramus, you are a master swordsman. Wasting no time, they entered the castle only to find themselves suddenly trapped in a steel room with the walls closing in on them. Small world, isn't it? And it's getting smaller all the time. I wish I was in Dixie. Closer and closer the walls came until... Bullwinkle, do something! Right, porthole! What are you doing with a yo-yo at a time like this? This is the way I always wanted to go. Nero fiddle while Rome burned. Toby wings. Oh, for gosh sake! Oddly enough, it was the yo-yo that saved them. For just overhead, looking down through a metal trap door... Why did you stop the presses? Because, idiot, I have never seen a yo-yo. Then how did you know it was a yo-yo? Look at it. What else would you call a thing like that? <coughs> Remarkable. How much do you want for this? You can have it for nothing if you give us jobs as cooks. The price is right. But for small, they are spies. Well, hello there, Mr. Mignon. I haven't seen you since our secret meeting when you were plotting to overthrow his nastiness here. So, you give to me the triple cross, no? Francois, it is part of my job. And this is part of mine. Take him away. Thus, Philip Mignon found himself behind bars while the three musketeers found themselves in the scullery preparing the evening meal. What are we going to cook, Rock? Francois Goose, I hope. That uh, should have been my line, Rock. But there was no time to switch, for the plucky squirrel immediately set about the task of baking a huge cake. Put these eggs in a bowl and beat it, Bullwinkle. Right! By the time Bullwinkle got back, the cake was completed. Now, here's the plan. One of us will get inside the cake, and when it's on the table, he can overhear where Francois was hiding the king. Well, seeing as how I always put my foot in it anyway, this time I'll put in the whole moose. Step aside. The cake and the plan were carried out, but not to the banquet hall, but to cell number 13, where two convicts whiled away their sentence playing checkers. It is your turn to move, Pierre. So involved were they, they neglected to notice the cake. Eventually, it was returned to the scullery. How did it go, 
Boonwinkle, did you find out what happened to the king? Yeah, he was jumped three times. Then the little guy with the red checkers, he... It was obvious that the plan had gone awry. This time, Rocky himself set the cake directly in front of Francois. What is this, cake? In honor of Applesauce Day. We celebrated that last week. Well, how about Lorraine Day? She's never been here. Dennis was here, but not Lorraine. We eat the cake anyway. For the hungry Francois grabbed a massive carving knife and prepared to cut the cake. Will our next episode be in two parts? Be with us next time for Just Desserts or Operator, We've Been Cut Off. Let us waste no time in going back inside Francois Villain's castle, where last time, you'll recall, the three musketeers, Athos, Rocky, and Bullwinkle, obtained positions as cooks. Who's the cake for? You, Bullwinkle! But instead of the cake getting inside Bullwinkle, Bullwinkle got inside the cake. Keep your ears open and maybe you'll hear where Francois hidden the king of applesauce Lorraine. Keeping my ears open in here is going to be kind of difficult. The huge cake was set upon the banquet table, but alas, the best laid plans of moose and men often go astray. Before I let slip where the king is, I will cut the cake. It appeared as though Bullwinkle would reach a parting of the ways. Ah, but mooses, unlike most of us, are allergic to the insides of cakes. And... <laughs> Look at your suit, Mr. Villain. Never mind this suit. You got whipped cream all over this diary in which I keep all my secrets. Huh? Well, here, let me clean it up for you. Moments later in the castle basement... Open it up, Portal. Perhaps it will tell us where the king is hidden. But the only thing that would open the diary was a key which was around villain's villainous throat. Leave it to me. I'll get it. Waiting his chance, Bullwinkle crept up behind the unsuspecting Francois and, taking a pair of scissors, snipped a cord behind his neck. <laughs> but through a miscalculation, Bullwinkle had severed a pair of suspenders. What is coming off here? Your trousers, sir. But it's okay. It's time for your bath. Leading the way to a door, Bullwinkle opened it, then stood to one side. Watch out for the first step, Francis. It is a Lulu. Don't call me Francis. The name is... The... That first step was indeed a Lulu, for it ended 200 feet below in the moon. You ignoramus, look what you have done. Now I will have to change my clothes. Good. Give me the key to your diary and I'll dry it off for you. Look, on the last page, tomorrow I go to the king. That is it. That is what we are looking for. It was decided that Bowwinkle, being the least conspicuous of the three, would follow Francois when he went to the king. But the route was a devious one. Over tall mountains, through hotel lobbies, until finally they came to a stop inside a large, dark building. This must be where the king is. Bullwinkle was 100% right, except that he was wrong. For the king, as it turned out, was the King Theater where Francois had gone to see a Chester Morris movie. When the lights came on during intermission, the inconspicuous Bullwinkle was stage center calling... Yoo-hoo, king! Here, boy, here, boy! Francois, being an inveterate movie fan, knew that that was not Chester Morris. So, you have followed me. You are a spy. Summoning the ushers, who were in reality Francois's henchmen, Bullwinkle was quickly taken captive and transported back to the castle in chains. Furious because he had missed the picture, Francois vented his rage by sentencing Bullwinkle to the guillotine. Here now, you cut it out. Not cut it out. Cut it off! The forlorn moose was placed in position and the blade of the guillotine was raised. When I say three, let it drop. One, two... Just a second, Mr. Villain. You've got the wrong moose. I am the leader of the spy ring. It made no difference to Francois who got it in the neck so long as somebody did. Seconds later, our little squirrel found himself in Bullwinkle's place. Rocky, what's the matter with you? Have you lost your head? We'll find out next time in Severed Relations or... How to get ahead. While it looks as though the three musketeers, Rocky, Bullwinkle, and Athos, are finally getting close to discovering the whereabouts of the king of applesauce Lorraine. Look what it says in Francois Villain's diary. Tomorrow I will go to the king. But unfortunately, the king Francois Villain went to was the king theater. Goody, goody, a Mickey Moose cartoon. It was a moose, all right, but the wrong one. Bullwinkle was taken back to Villain's Castle and condemned to the guillotine. It looked as though the show would be minus a moose. Stop! I'm the spy you want! And then it looked as though we'd be minus a flying squirrel. What's coming off here, Rock? He's head in exactly three seconds. Ready? Aim! Drop! The razor-sharp blade hurtled downward, only to strike the back of Rocky's neck and hurtle upward. Then down again. 
Then I put... What is going on? That blade acts as if it was made of rubber. Which is just what it was, for Rocky had switched blades the night before. Very well. If I can't kill you, I will put you away. Take him to Chateau Briand. Dear Bullwinkle, don't try to rescue me. I have a hunch Chateaubriand is where the king is being held. Repeat, don't rescue me. And at that moment, the cart carrying our wee hero came clattering over the cobblestone street. Chin up, Rock! Here, Bullwinkle, catch! Oh, he's got spunk. Playing with paper airplanes at a time like this. Alas, Bullwinkle was unaware that that paper airplane was the note Rocky had just written. See, that gives me an idea. Rushing to the top of a high cliff, Bullwinkle hastily constructed a large version of the paper airplane. I will swoop down and pluck that plucky squirrel right off that cart. But, Eremus, that paper airplane will not stay in the air. I don't see why not. I made it out of fly paper. With that, he took off and disappeared over the edge. Surprisingly enough, the plane flew. Not only that, but at stared in amazement when the plane, its pilot, and a passenger came soaring back to the top of the cliff. I got him, Athos! I got him! You got him, all right. You got the driver of the cart. Undismayed, Bullwinkle made a second attempt. I got him this time! You sure have. You got the horse. I thought he looked kind of big for a squirrel. Well, if at first you don't proceed... Certain that the third time would be the charm, he took off again. But alas, by now the cart carrying Rocky had rolled downhill and through the main gate of the infamous Chateaubriand. As for Bullwinkle, he did bring someone back to the top of the cliff. Who is it this time? I don't know. Claims his name is Lindbergh. I'll try again. No, the squirrel is already inside the chateau. Well, let us get him out. We. Oui. Now listen. Here is what we will do. Rocky, meanwhile, had been thrown into Chateaubriand's deepest dungeon and was contemplating his fate. First I gotta find the king, then I gotta get a message out to Bullwinkle. Psst! Rock! Hi, Bullwinkle! Then I gotta think of a way to... Bullwinkle! I thought I told you not to rescue me! But it wasn't a rescue, for Athos' plan to gain access to the prison was to bribe a guard. Only the guard turned out to be me, Francois Villain. Thus the three musketeers found themselves together again, but in a most hopeless situation. And as if that wasn't bad enough, suddenly the walls of the cell began to tremble. Was it an earthquake? We'll find out next time in That's the Way the Cookie Crumbles, or Me and My Chateau. Our plot has reached such a state of confusion that I think I'll let our cast try and explain it. Well, I, Rocky, or Porthole... Uh, you see what I mean? ...am inside Chateaubriand's dankest dungeon. And I, Bullwinkle, alias Aramus, am outside Chateaubriand trying to rescue Rocky. Yes, but I, Rocky, don't want to be rescued until I find out where the King of Applesauce Lorraine is. Yes, but I, Bullwinkle, don't know that. Now, what about you, Athos? I, Athos, have a splitting headache. Well, that's under understandable, for it was the aging musketeer's idea to bribe a guard and gain access to the chateau. Only the guard turned out to be Francois Villain. All three of you will stay in there until you rot. It got progressively rottener, for just as we closed our preceding installment, the walls of the cell began to tremble. Hokey smokes, it feels like an earthquake. Quick, do something. I've got an idea. What? Let's do the recap over and change the plot so that we're somewhere in the South Pacific. But there was no time to do that, for suddenly a section of the far wall crashed to the floor in a million pieces. Look, fellas, a passageway. They entered the dim cobwebby corridor, only to discover it led to three more corridors. Oh, fuck. Now we gotta make a choice. I see. Let's take the one on the left. Right? I prefer the one in the middle. Tell you what. We'll each take one. Maybe one of us can find the king and a way out of here. It sounded like the right thing to do. However, there were complications. Take Bullwinkle, for instance. His corridor led to a long flight of steps that came to a dead end. Hmm. Looks like I've reached an impasse. Actually, it was a wall, but luck was with him, for on the other side was a huge picture of the Cathedral of Notre Dame. It was a simple matter to open one of the doors, come downstairs, and continue his search. Athos faced a similar problem, for his corridor led to the brink of a 200-foot drop. But although the corridor stopped, Athos didn't. Strangely enough, what he fell into was Chateaubriand's indoor pool. And instead of the guards grabbing him, they applauded him. Beautiful dive, monsieur. C'est magnifique! 
Athos emerged from the water, bowed gracefully, and continued onward. As for Rocky, his corridor eventually narrowed to a point where it was only one foot high, and even more puzzling was the fact that he was knee-deep in jewels and coins. Well, at least it's a safe place to keep money. Safe is right, for that's exactly what it was, a wall safe belonging to Francois Villain. I think I will count my goodies. <laughs> But instead of bringing out the crown jewels, he brought out a flying squirrel. You! Me! Rocky bolted out of the room and down the hall. Guards! Guards! Arrest him! A frantic search was launched but proved fruitless, for Rocky had ducked into a room and wisely hung out a do not disturb sign on the doorknob. Well, monsieur, are you two a prisoner? Turning, Rocky came face to face with... The King of Applesauce Lorraine. Your Highness! Yes, I am Your Highness. How come you're wearing a girdle? They couldn't find an iron mask, so they put me in this. Shh! Somebody's coming in! <laughs> that somebody was, of all people... Bullwinkle! Hi, Rock. Who's your friend? That's the King of Applesauce Lorraine. Well, if it is, then who's this? And there, standing at Bullwinkle's side, was another man who looked like the King. We'll learn the answer in a raw deal, or two aces and a pair of kings. Let us return to Chateaubriand, where last time, the desperate search for the King of Applesauce Lorraine came to an end. At last, Your Highness, now you can be returned to your rightful place on the throne. That throne might be a little overcrowded, for Bullwinkle turned up with a very unreasonable facsimile of what Rocky had found. Jeepers, now we got a pair of kings. Whose bid is it? Mine. I bid three kings. Yes, unbelievable as it seems, Athos, too, had found a king. Which one of you is the real king of Applesauce Lorraine? I am. I am. I am, too. It was Rocky's quick wit and keen eye that settled the problem. You, sir, are a phony planted here by Francois Villain. I am not. I am the king. Correction. You are a professional roller skater. I am the king. Then how come you're wearing roller skates? Sure enough, the rascal had neglected to remove the tools of his trade. As for you, you're an imposter, too. I am the king. No, you're not. You're a cross-country track star. There on the back of the second pretender to the throne was the number three. The third king had to be the real king. The next problem was how to escape. Now, at 12 o'clock noon each day, Chateaubriand had a changing of the guard. As the new ship marched in, the old ship marched out. And with them, posing as shipless guards, went our heroes and the king. Five miles from Chateaubriand, they came to a halt in front of the outside inn. We'll stop long enough to get a bite to eat. But there were a few surprises in store. I am most sorry, but we have sent all the food to the palace for the celebration. What celebration? The coronation. At five o'clock, Francois Villon is proclaiming himself king. And according to the egg timer on the wall, it was already 4.30. Quick, we must get to the castle. That would take some doing, for at that moment in walked a platoon of Francois Villon's elite guard. Innkeeper, a bottle of soda pop and 16 straws. Keep your voices down. They might not recognize us. Good idea, Rock. Why are you whispering? Well, we don't want you to know that we are taking the king here back to the castle so that he can... That did it. The fight was on. And it didn't look too good for our side. For one thing, Athos was furiously battling what he thought was a guard, but due to his poor eyesight, he was merely fighting his own image in a mirror. I almost hate to kill you, you handsome dog. It remained for Rocky and Bullwinkle to turn the tide, and turn it they did. Ellie, you, Bullwinkle! Here you go, Rock! <laughs> Come on, there's no time to lose. We got just enough time to get to the castle. Wait, this fool will not die. We're not quite sure how they did it, but they all arrived at the castle gate in less than a minute. It was then that Rocky noticed that while they had been running, the king had been skating. Oh, no! We got the wrong king! Meanwhile, inside the castle, the coronation ceremony was in progress. Do you, Francois Villain, take this hat with the points on it to be your lawful wedded crown? Oh, skip all this folder all and crown me. I would love to, but you must wait until I finish my speech. Pathos, you run and bring back the right king while Bullwinkle and I stall the coronation as long as possible. With that, Athos took off, but as luck would have it, he passed a gum machine on which there was a large mirror. So, you have come back for more, eh? Hunger! Well, it's a terrible way to end an episode, but what are you gonna do? Will Francois Villain get crowned? Will Athos defeat his arch enemy? We'll find out in Rocky Draws the Line, or Who's Got My Ruler? 
It's with a great deal of alarm that we return to Applesauce Lorraine, for it looks as though Francois Villain is about to become the new king. When I reign, I am going to pour. And pour aptly describes the situation our heroes are in. You will no doubt recall that they rescued what they thought was the real king and arrived just outside the castle walls only to discover that they had made a boo-boo. Yes, I fell down and scraped my knee. It's the worst boo-boo I've ever had. Oh, not that kind of a boo-boo. He means we brought back the wrong king. There was only one thing to do. Rocky and Bullwinkle dash inside the castle to stall the coronation ceremony while Athos hurried off to retrieve the right king. But en route, Athos passed a gum machine and mistook what he saw in the mirror for his arch enemy. Archie, I will defeat you if it take the rest of my life. Inside the castle, Rocky and Bullwinkle had managed to add a few extra pages to the archbishop's coronation speech. Four score and seven years ago. Come on, get it over with and crown me. Athos better get back here pretty soon. There isn't much time left. Unfortunately, when Athos did return... Where's the king? Don't tell us you came back empty-handed. But of course not. Look. Chewing gum. Yes, that handsome guard gave it to me to stop fighting with him. I come not to bury Caesar, but to praise him. Oh, boy. I'll have to go get the king myself. Whatever you do, fellas, don't let Francois Villain get crowned until I get back. <laughs> Enough of this brittle prattle. Make me king. But I still have Lou Gehrig's speech at Yankee Stadium left. Make me king. Very well. I hereby call you... Stop! Who are you? I'm your Acme carpet cleaning man. There's a stain on your rug. There is now. There is now. Well, clean it up and get out of here. Well, it won't take but an hour, or longer if I hurry. Throwing the machine into reverse, Bullwinkle uh. shot a cloud of dirt about the Great Hall. It will take him a year to clean this mess. Quick, put the crown on my head. But the resourceful moose was equal to the occasion. Switching the machine to intake, he not only sucked up the crown, but the Archbishop and Francois Villain as well. But Villain, too, was equal to the occasion. Put the crown on me, I say. But it is dark in here. Do what I say. Crown me. Well, he has been asking for it. I hereby crown thee. The vast audience rose in anger. Now we will never have a king. Kill the moose. But you have a king. And there in the doorway stood Rocket J. Squirrel with a true king of Applesauce Lorraine. Long no, live the king. Hip, hip, hooray. Thus, the good folk of Applesauce Lorraine returned to their former peaceful existence. As for Francois Villain, he was made royal gardener and spent the rest of his life pruning Limburger lilies. I've had some lousy jobs in my life, but this one really stinks. Their job done, Rocky and Bullwinkle bid Athos a fond farewell. Au revoir, Portal. Bon voyage, Aramus. See, I think it is high time we told you that I am not really Aramus and he's not really Portal. That makes us even, mon ami, because I am not really at to be one of the original musketeers, I would have to be 500 years old. Well, then, who are you? Robin Hood. Well, little John, here we go again. <laughs> I guess that about wraps up another Rocky show. Certainly hope you enjoyed it. I did. I always say... A bullwinkle. Time for us to go. Already? Okay, but first, here are some of the people who made this show impossible. Oop! Go away from me again. Well, see you next time. Ready, Bullwinkle?